All right, good evening, sisters and brothers, and uh, welcome to this evening's evening prayer, and um, trust that you are well. Today is uh, Thursday, the 29th of October, and we come to say thanks to our God for his goodness and his faithfulness to us this new day. This day that he gave us, and we are by God's grace, seeing the end of this day. And so we want to thank him for his sustaining grace, his life, the Zoe life that he gave us to live for him today. So let's pray as we draw this day to a close. Oh God, oh make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. There shall come forth a shoot from the stalk of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear. But with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. The wolf shall dwell with the lamb and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf, the lion and the fatling together and a little child to lead them. They shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. And this was this Archanticles from Isaiah 11, which is talking about the new heaven and the new earth. When when righteousness comes, but when the one who is righteous comes, he will judge the he shall he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. And when that time comes, when he comes, the lion and the lamb shall lie together, and the child shall lead them. We look forward to that day when the Lord returns and set up his kingdom, a kingdom of righteousness, justice, and peace. And there will be no more war. That this evening may be holy, good and peaceful. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and to set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. And our collect. O oh God, the source of all good desires, all right judgments, and all just works, give to your servants that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and that, freed from the fear of our enemies, we may pass our time in rest and quietness, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And our evening confession, our evening confession from the prayer book. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and the desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent according to thy promises, declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord, and grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, 
to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Okay, and our psalm for this evening is Psalm 138. Psalm 138. Psalm 138. I will praise you, Lord, with all my heart. Before the gods, I will sing your praise. I will bow down toward your holy temple and will praise your name for your unfailing love and your faithfulness. For you have so exalted your name, solemn decree, that it surpasses your fame. When I called, you answered me. You greatly emboldened me. May all the kings of the earth praise you, Lord, when they hear what you have decreed. May they sing of the ways of the Lord, for the glory of the Lord is great. Though the Lord is exalted, he looks kindly on the lowly. Though lofty, he sees them from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve my life. You stretch out your hand against the anger of my foes. With your right hand, you save me. The Lord will vindicate me. Your love, Lord, endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your hands. Amen. It's a glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Traditionally in the church, when the psalm is said, uh, we, we normally say that the Gloria at that point. Anyway, now, um, Tim Keller's uh, commentary, he calls it, he looks upon the lowly. David turns away from the gods, which are the high and powerful beings and people like kings and those in authority, those uh, rulers. He perceives that though high and exalted himself, God is always close to the lowly in two senses. He loves the poor and the widowed, and he comes into the hearts and lives only of those humble enough to know they need a savior. In other words, humble enough to know they are poor and widowed, as it were. It is people without resources who know best the lavishness of God's love. Self-sufficient people don't go to God with the same desperation and so never discover his true love and his power on their behalf. It is those who are truly desperate. It is those who are humble enough to know that they need God who truly seek out God as their savior. Those who are self-sufficient don't think they need God, and so they don't seek God. They, don't, they are not desperate enough for God. Sisters and brothers, I guess the question is, are you desperate enough for God? Are you, do you see yourself as humble and poor and in need of this God? Or do you find that you are self-sufficient? You only need God to, when things are going bad. When things are not going as well as you planned. Other than that, you are you're okay. You got this. <laughs> as the Americans say, I got this. Well, only those who are truly humble and poor will see their desire and their need for God. Lord, we live in a culture that calls for self-assertion. Yet, if you withdrew your upholding strength, we would cease to exist in the blink of an eye. We confess that we forget that and think we are holding ourselves and the world together. We ask that you would heal us of our damnable self-sufficiency. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. It's a great prayer. If you withdrew your upholding strength, we would cease to exist in the blink of an eye. 
That's why we come and give thanks to God for sustaining us through the day. Because everything we have, including the very breath we breathe, is a sign of God's grace. We don't, there is nothing we have that we did not receive, says Paul in 1 Corinthians, I think, verse chapter 4. There is nothing we have that we did not receive. The very breath we breathe. So sisters and brothers, let us use it to give him thanks. To praise him. To come at the end of a day to say thank you, Lord. Be grateful for his grace. Amen. Our New Testament reading is Jesus' words in John chapter 16. John chapter 16, reading from verse 1 to 15. John 16. Gospel of John chapter 16. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, I have said these things to you to keep you from stumbling. They will put you out of the synagogues indeed. An hour is coming when those who kill you will think they are doing so, that by doing so they are offering worship to God. And they will do this because they have not known the Father or me. But I have said these things to you so that when their hour comes, you may remember that I told you about them. I did not say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you. But now I am going to him who sent me. Not yet, not one of, none of you asks me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. And about sin, because they do not believe in me. About righteousness, because I am going to the Father and you will see me no longer. About judgment, because the ruler of this world has been condemned. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears. And he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the father has is mine. For this reason, I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. Amen. All right, sisters and brothers. So we have the coming of the Holy Spirit. Jesus predicts the Holy Spirit coming and teaching us. But before we do that, I, I do want to just look at something he said at the very beginning. He's, he's, he's prophesying that a time is coming when people who persecute the believers... He's speaking particularly to his disciples, but of course, by extension, it appeals, it applies to all of his children, all his children throughout the ages. And he's saying the time is coming when, the, the, the hour is coming when those who kill you will think they're doing so as an offering of worship to God. Now, let's think about that for a moment. Jesus is saying that there's a time coming when the people who kill the believers in Jesus, the Christians, will do so because they believe they're doing God a favor. They are doing it out of worship to God. Now, sisters and brothers, I, I want you to think about that. There is a group of people today in our world who do this. They do this. Um, we, we, they, they're called Islamists or Islamic fundamentalists. They... They use their scriptures or their religion or their beliefs and they kill people in the name of their religion thinking that they're doing a service to God. They, they believe that by blowing up places or by killing people or by stabbing people, we, we, are, we, are, we are hearing what's going on in Paris or in France. 
that there are terrorist attacks there. And by calling out the name of God when they are doing this, they think they are doing God as a service. They think they are doing God worship by doing this, by killing people. And Jesus, it's amazing, Jesus prophesied that there is a time coming when people are going to do this. They, they think that by killing you, they are doing God. They're doing it on behalf of God. They're doing God's work. And Jesus said they, they, they will do this because they do not know the Father. Yeah, this, is, uh, this is so important. They, they do this because they don't know the Father or, the, or me. They don't know Jesus and they don't know God. But they think they do. They are self-deceived thinking that they know God when they don't. And so they do these things in the name of God, thinking that they're doing God a, a, a service, they're doing worship to God. But in fact, Jesus is saying they're doing it for themselves. They're not doing it for God because they don't know God and they don't know Jesus. That I just thought that was interesting. <laughs> anyway, Jesus goes on to talk about the coming of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit, he says... In, in, in verse in, in, in verse uh, verse 7, I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage I go away. If I do not go away, the advocate will not come to you. Um, and when he comes, verse 8, he will prove the world wrong about sin, righteousness, and judgment. He will prove the world wrong. He will convict the world of sin righteousness and judgment sin he says because they do not believe in me so this is sin righteousness because i am going away to the father and uh, and, and 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 of course jesus is the is a paradigm of righteousness so he's not around anymore so because i am going to the father you will see me no longer and so the world will not have the righteousness of christ anymore and judgment because the ruler of this world has been judged. The ruler of this world, the enemy, this Satan, the devil, has been judged. And uh, Jesus, he was judged at the, at the, at the resurrection of our Lord. And, um, and so, yes, the, the world stands convicted because they do not, the world does not accept Jesus. And so he said, we, however, will be taught the truth by the Spirit. When he, the Spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own, but speak only what he hears my Father saying. So, so, so the Holy Spirit, to the world, the Holy Spirit will convict the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment. But to you, to those of us who have received Christ, those of us who have received the message of Jesus, we will receive the spirit of truth who will then teach us all truth. Let's pray. Father, we, we thank you for the words of Jesus that, Lord, your Holy Spirit is a spirit of truth who comes to teach us your truth. And the Lord, we pray that even as we meditate on your word, your Holy Spirit will bring to mind your truth. The truth, the truth that's relevant for our hearts right now, the truth that is important for us to hear at this very moment in our lives. May we hear that truth, we pray, by the power of your Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth, our advocate and counselor and helper. Lord, we pray for, especially as we th I'm thinking about the attacks in, 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 in France, the terrorist attacks, especially uh, the, that attack in, in, in the Cathedral of Notre Dame. We pray for the, for those, the families of those who were killed in that church. Lord, we ask for your, for your help for them. And we pray, Lord, we continue to pray for the end to terrorism. There's so many terrorist um, organizations in the world. But right now, we are, we, our minds are focused on the Islamists, 
those who kill in the name of religion, in the name of God, thinking that by doing this, they are doing a service for God. And so they are self-deluded and, uh, 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 and they are deceived, thinking that killing in the name of God is something that's acceptable to God. Now, the Lord, we pray for these people who perpetuate this kind of belief, who teach this kind of doctrine, as Paul would say, a doctrine of the devils. And so, Lord, we pray for them. We pray that you will set them free from that evil spirit that controlled them. We pray for the family of those who have been uh, affected by these terrorist acts in, Paris, in, in, in France. And we ask, Lord, that you will, you will bring um, hope and strength to them, even as they, they mourn, as they grieve, due, oh, as a result of this senseless act of violence. And so, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, remember us tonight, Lord, we pray. Remember us and all those we are praying for on our prayer list, in our church, in our community. Remember them tonight, Lord, we pray. We bring their needs to you. We bring their names to you. Lord, you know them. You know their needs more than we do, and you know their, you know their desires. You know, Lord what they need more than we do. And so, Lord, you are our helper. And we pray that you will bring help to those who are in need tonight. Those who are sick, those who are suffering in body or mind, mentally, emotionally, or physically, we ask for your intervention. We ask for your compassion. We ask for pity and mercy upon them. And so, Lord, we pray for them today. We remember those who are undergoing treatment for cancer uh, in any way. We pray for them. We pray for Ambrose's friends, Jules and Dennis. We pray for the Green family, Angela's friends, Helen. We pray for Lily's mom in Romania, Cornelia, and Lily's sister, Mia. We pray for them tonight, Lord. We ask for your intervention in their lives. We pray, Lord, that you will meet them where they need you most, at that place of need. Lord Jesus, have compassion on these, your people. Remember, Lord, we pray, Glenis' mom, Vida, in, in Grenada. Remember Constance and Michael in Canada. And Gigi in Guyana. Lord, we bring these to you and we ask that you will intervene on their behalf, Lord, we pray, and bring them hope, bring them strength, bring them grace. We pray, Lord, for, for Tavern in, in Switzerland. We ask that you'll strengthen his faith as he grows more and more in the, in the likeness of Christ. Lord, we pray that you'll draw him nearer to you and all whatever difficulties that he may be going through, whatever suffering, Lord, we pray that through the difficulty, through the suffering, you will bring him into a more meaningful relationship with you. We pray for Tavern tonight. And Lord, we pray that you'll hear his prayer and Lord, reveal yourself to him through your word and... Uh, and strengthen him by the power of your word. And Lord, we pray that you strengthen that faith, strengthen his body and mind, and help him to truly live for you. We pray for Aunt Jenny and uh, those who are looking after her. We thank you for her faith, and we pray that you strengthen that faith. Lord, even as she gets older, we pray that that faith will get stronger and stronger every day in you. So the Lord, these are people that we've, we've been praying for, and we, we know, Lord, that you hear us when we pray, not because of ourselves, but because we pray through the power and grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is in his name that we bring to you the things that are on our hearts, Lord. And so, Lord, we know you hear us, not because of us, but because of him. 
So hear us through the power of your Son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. And so let's say a few night prayers before we say good night for tonight. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night, and give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ, give rest to the weary, bless the dying, soothe the suffering, pity the afflicted, shield the joyous, and all for your love's sake. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins. As we forgive those who sin against us, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look kindly upon you and give you his peace and perfect rest tonight. And for all you love and your family, in Jesus' name, amen. Have a good night, sisters and brothers.